Walking in the snow I want to tell you one more time What I'm thinking about Good evening, everybody. This is our Christmas version of Surviving Life's Tribulations. Um, my co-host is on his way here. He got stuck in some traffic, but um, we're going to have a little bit lighter note tonight, as we did also last week. First thing I want to say is um, glad to be here another day. It's always a good day when you get up. Even though you might be in some pain or you might be hurting, your soul might be hurting, um, at least you're up another day. Um, I want to thank all my guests who've been on the show so far. Um, you've made, made a positive influence in my life, and I'm getting some positive feedback from people about the impact you've made on their lives also. Um, being Christmas, it's kind of a lonely time for somebody, um, for a lot of people. I read an article today about two-thirds of the women in the country are depressed this time of year, which... I think a lot of that has to do with all the commercialism with Christmas. Um, I wish Christmas would get back to just being about what it's supposed to be about, and that's the birth of Christ, um, not just getting toys and, you know, all the good stuff. Um, I admit I got my kids stuff when they were younger, but they were, they didn't ask for certain things. I just gave them, you know, and I think people need to give from their heart not, you know, how much you spend, but what you get. And I think that's getting lost um, in society right now. Um, we're going to bring some people on tonight that are going to be singing some Christmas carols and different things tonight. And I think Austin, when Austin gets here, we're going to just kind of relive some of our Christmas past. Um, I know with me, you know, I've been thinking a lot about my son he didn't like the commercialism of Christmas at all. Um, I think that's something that growing up with my family, we just didn't do it, you know. Um, it was always about the cookies that Grandma made and, you know, decorating the house and all the different things and all the little ornaments and relics that have been passed down through, you know, through, you know, to the family. And I was going through some Christmas things the other day, and I used to have a tree every year for the kids, um, kind of a, you know, different symbols. Like one year we had a Creighton tree, you know, we had a Husker tree, we had a NASCAR tree, you know, I got my son his Dell Earnhardt Jr. ornaments, and I had my Jimmy Johnson ornaments, and then we had a NFL tree, so we had the Denver Broncos and uh, Chicago Bears and Seattle Seahawks. So, you know, always kind of a theme Christmas. Um, for some reason, I do not remember last Christmas whatsoever. Um, I didn't remember what kind of tree I had. I thought I lost my tree. I was going around the houses all panicking and trying to, f you know, all the stores trying to find a tree. Then all of a sudden I was looking for something and I found a tree. I don't remember getting this tree. So um, I think the first Christmas, through the shock of my son committing suicide, you know, first year, you know, a month after Thanksgiving, but I was still in shock, I have to admit, you know, and I think everybody was still in shock. I can remember certain things about Christmas that year, but last year, I don't know. I don't remember anything. I even had to ask my son, were you home last year for Christmas? He's like, yeah, Mom, I was there. Well, I don't remember. But I think all the things that I've done through this last year, you know, with the radio show and uh, working all the time and all the different things, and I think that's just something that's probably put on the back shelf of my mind. Um, you know, Christmas should be about kids, you know, the families getting together. I'm very fortunate that my sister moved back um, from Las Vegas, and uh, yesterday was my nephew's birthday. My nephew got killed in a car crash about nine years ago, so we celebrated his birthday with all the different, you know, the favorite foods, and we realized yesterday that both our sons who have passed both had their favorite dinners, which was homemade pizza. So I guess we have, you know, that tradition we'll always have together. And 
with my sister being moved away for all those years, I realized being with her the last couple months, um, we're a lot alike, but then we're different. Um, but we have the same, you know, the little thing makes us giggle. So last night I got home last night, I was kind of reminiscing about last night and just thinking about we would laugh at the same time. We would laugh, to, you know, easily because that's just what we are. You know, we're a couple little giggle boxes, as my grandma used to say. Um, but we've also had a lot of the same hurt, you know. Um, she would bring up things um, about when I used to take her places, you know. She was kind of like my little tag along, a little sister. My mom was working all the time. And so my sister, I pretty much took her everywhere I went, which high school kids normally don't do this. But, you know, she just wasn't wasn't heard. You know, she was just like to go with the big sis. Um, so last night she was talking about, remember when, remember when? And you know how you bury things in the back of your mind, in your deep subconscious, and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, and then you start talking about it. But if you ask me today certain things that happened back then, I couldn't tell you. But you always have these trigger points in your mind. And I'm sure when Austin gets here, we can talk about that, too. So, and here comes Austin and little Emma. Hi, Emma. Um, You want to pull up a chair? You can sit right here with us. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm just kind of talking about reminiscing about my sister being back and different things. Oh, nice. Yeah, she moved back from Las Vegas. And there was a a ridiculous amount of traffic. Everyone getting their last-minute shopping mixed with... uh, Russia. Why do people wait to the last minute? Yeah. That's my point. You have all year long. And I'm very fortunate. I didn't have to buy presents this year. No presents. That's awesome. Not a single present. And I got mine when I got my iPad mini, so I'm good. Nice. Yeah, that was Santa came early for you. Yeah, and I just, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, so Emma, how you doing? Good. We're going to put you on our show. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and Shay is on her way, and she's going to sing a little uh, Christmas carol for us. Nothing too fancy. She said maybe just a chorus or two. Oh, that's fine. You know, it's the, I said we're going to have kind of an upbeat show tonight. Yeah. She just got over having uh, the flu, and uh, she's had a shed a rough week uh, last week and called it. didn't go to sick or school, uh, not school. What is it? Work. Work. I was thinking of school because they're out of school now. And, uh, I know. Do you remember getting this long out of school? No. Well, because... I'm still in school, and I feel like I just finished, like, two days ago a final. But it was a take-home final, and I did wait kind of late on it. But I know, Matt, and I was just talking, and I was just saying that um, I don't remember last Christmas at all. I really don't remember. Matt was home. I had to ask Matt. He was home. Matt, yeah, because he was working at yeah. the restaurant, and I was like, Matt, uh, and sorry, Emma, but I had a little, you know, brain thing here. But I don't remember anything about last Christmas. And I said, I think it's... You know, the first year when Steve died, I was kind of in shock. Yeah, and that was, you know. So the last Christmas, the I, time, like, right, and last year I just, we probably didn't do much. You know, he was working, I was working. I think we just spent the time together going to movies. And like I was saying, we've never been all about the gifts. Yeah. You know, just spending time together. And I used to make presents for that's years. About, you know, it's about family more so than the gifts, you know. Uh, but ask a little seven-year-old that. He will, he'll tell you different. Little yeah. Kids are different. That's because Santa's still coming. But Santa still comes to our house for our puppies and our dogs. And Shay really loves Christmas, and uh, we have lots of decorations and stuff. It's pretty fun, though. Um, I said I couldn't even remember having a tree. I was going crazy thinking I had to go out and buy a tree. So I went looking everywhere, every store, couldn't find the one I want. And all of a sudden, I'm digging in that little bedroom I have with everything in it. Yeah. And I found a little tree that I had, and I didn't know I had it. Nice. Yeah, we little three foot little thing, but it's really cute. So I had my own tree. Mine's is, yeah, mine's a short one, um, but Shay wasn't happy with it. So that we have a tree in our uh, like kind of in our kitchen area, uh, and then we got a new one, like a, a white uh, fake one, it's black. which we got a, on Black Friday. We did, or was it Black Friday? It was one of those sales. You didn't go to Target, did you? No, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> I did get an email though from Target uh, saying they're doing everything they can. But Wasn't that a crazy thing, huh? I haven't shopped there in, I don't know. I'd never really liked Target. I admit, I went the day before, so I was lucky I didn't go in that little two-week grace period where everybody got yeah. ripped off. So that was Steve's favorite store, though. He loved Target. I'm still a Kmart and Shopco type girl. Yeah. You know, I've been a Kmart person, and I just, 
I don't know why, and there's only what. There's a Kmart right up by my house now. I haven't gone in yet because I thought that they were extinct. I, <laughs> I know, right? But I always go over to the little Baker's 132nd. I used to go to them a lot in high school for uh, the little Caesars that were in some of them at the time and the, all the big Ks. They're not, um, they don't take really good care of their stores, I'm going to have to say. You know, the big thing was, you know, they were the only ones who had layaway for for years and years. But now everybody's got layaway. You know, I think it's like a big, you know, war going on in the stores. Who can stay up the latest? Who can stay open, you know? Like every Target, there's like a Walmart right next to it or really close by. Just like a Burger King, there's a McDonald's. I mean, or Subway, there's, yeah, that's just the way. There's a Popeye's, there's a KFC. I mean, everybody's out to get what they can in the world, and I wish the world would kind of get back to just being about well, people. That's one thing that's great about this season is everyone is a little bit nicer. I don't think so. I don't, I've seen some great things lately. I, I don't know. I guess some people like are the complete opposite in Grinches and Scrooge, but some people go really the extra mile and like a whole town um, or city uh, in California, probably a smaller one, but uh, one of their guys won the lottery. And for Christmas, he put everybody, uh, gave everybody a thirty-five dollar gift card to uh, Walmart and put it in the mailbox, and everyone, every person who was a citizen of that town, got that. I saw, he, so, I saw something on Beyonce. She was shopping for her little kid at Toys R Us or wherever, and as she was leaving, she got on the microphone, tell everybody they got a fifty dollar gift card. That's awesome. Yeah, but the good story I heard today was this little girl. She's eight years old. She's dying. She won't make it through next Christmas. And all she wanted was carolers at her house. 12,000 people. 1,200 people showed up to carol in front of her house. Was that a, a make a wish or was it a... Yeah, it was... Well, no, it wasn't really make it. It's just what she wanted. Because so she said she... It. Yeah, everybody everybody got on, you know, social media and yeah. talked about it. And uh, 1,200 people, and it shows it on TV. And she was so sick, she could so weak, she couldn't get up to see. So but she could hear it, and she... You know, they took a picture and they put it on, uh, you know, video so everybody could see that all these people are outside of her house seeing Christmas carols for, and that's all she wanted. Last year, I don't know if it was around Christmas time, I can't remember, um, but I got to see a, a Make-A-Wish Foundation um, scenario like that. It was this little boy, and uh, I wasn't sure exactly what he had. It was up at my work. Uh, we had rented the venue out to Make-A-Wish Foundation, and uh, they also catered it, too. Um, but then, uh, like, they went the extra mile. They had, like, probably like a couple hundred people in this uh, place. And he wanted to be a pop star, like a rock star. So they flew him out to, uh, I think, L.A. And he got to, like, record a couple songs with um, Maroon 5 and meet them and have, like, a meet and greet. And then they flew him back here and then brought him up in a limo. They had ga- uh, guys all out in, um, like, with security shirts. And then they wore tattoo sleeves. Like, they weren't tattooed, but... Their clothes were to make, oh, it look like make it look like they had tattoos. And then they had like um, tons of beautiful women there who were uh, like just like scrambling at, at trying to like screaming his name. Um, and like the gu- security guards are holding him back, making it look like he's got crazed fans. And oh, that was that'd be he comes awesome. Up and sings a song. Yeah, it was it was great. I couldn't believe it. I thought it like, and I was just there working. And I was like, this is this is a really sight to see. Um, yeah, no, Make Your Wish Foundation. They just had a the officer. He locks himself up. Every year at Christmas time, and they just raise. Oh, I guess this is special. Let me see. Raised forty two hundred dollars for Special Olympics. So there's certain things that people are doing. You know, Make a Wish Fund Day. I kind of been a part of it for years, being a part of uh, Incor and and yeah. what I do. But I think people are so hustle bustle right now. They're not taking the time out. You know, to be nice. So maybe your perspective of it and my perspective of it is. But yeah, some people, I guess, like, when you're shopping, you know, people aren't necessarily... Driving. Each other. Driving, driving, is where, driving is where they're, like, well, not... Yeah, I think you kind of got to give a pass to people on driving, because I don't think that anyone drives the way their personality is. Well, considering they have, they're on their cell phones and texting, oh, well, yeah. That's, I guess that's inconsiderate. But that's just what they do, though. Yeah. They got hands-free devices now. Well, just, just like phone. those... Um, Kids had just died the other, you know, yesterday. The other one died today. The girl this morning, they took her on life support. She died this afternoon, oh. not wearing seatbelts. You know. Yeah, I learned my lesson with seatbelts the hard way. You got to make sure he wears his seatbelt. Matt won't even let me get in the car without putting my seatbelt hey, on. Double checks me now. Huh? Um, it only takes one time, Austin. It only takes one. Time. I mean, I've been in a lot of accidents. You'd think I would have learned the lesson before, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's a going my head into the windshield to, to finally teach me. Hey, I remember that. That wouldn't have happened if you would have 
<laughs> well, your seatbelt. Well, you know, but it could have, but that probably didn't help. But no, it's just you know, kids are out driving around, you know, and uh, it, uh, well, they pass a law. I thought where you only can have one passenger. I thought there was some kind of law oh, now if you're I'm under sure. 16 or something. Yeah, I think there's rules. There were rules when I was first driving too, like you're not supposed to drive after midnight or something and i don't know i never followed them i didn't know what they were i don't think anybody does because nobody's doing it well, or they're not enforcing it or, yeah don't really know. well they i know they were getting ready to pass the laws but whatever um i do want to bring up something um i went to uh the wake for the girl that got killed outside passions um, yeah she was um same age as matt she's going to my daycare yeah, you said you used to babysit her. I used to babysit her, and um, Nick, her, you know, the whole family. And I went to the wake the other night, and seeing all the same age as Matt, how they used to be like five and six years old, now they're yeah. grown up, you know. They grow up fast. Oh, my gosh. And it's just, just seeing everybody in, in a – it was kind of a somber note. Yeah, but it's still nice to see It's still everybody. nice to see everybody. But then I feel like – why am I not seeing these people? Yeah. And it, and when you go to certain things, and, and I was telling Amy that her daughter died, and I said, everybody's going to be there for you now, but it's two years from now. Nobody's, you know. like Everyone I thinks that you're okay now. Yeah, but, you're, you know, you're never going to be. And I was talking to her, and I think I talked to you about a buddy system. Yes. You know, I still think, and I told her, I said, you know, I will, you know, she's got everybody for her now, but. I'll be her buddy because you just really need somebody to talk to. You do. You and know. I mean, that'll be good, you know. Like right now, and she may not have um, necessarily taken you seriously or, you know, she's thinking, like, not talking about it at the top of her head or going to other people first. But, you know, when that time comes, it's nice for her to know that it, when there was no one else to talk to two years down the line, when everyone thinks that you're okay or you've been over the conversation, you just need to. Uh, you know, someone else to talk to, that you're there. Yeah, you know, it's just it's good to put yourself in that kind of position. Well, say, it's I've it's it's, it's weird because you know you, you know all different. Like my sister, her son got killed in a car accident, yeah. and then my son committed suicide. Then Amy's daughter got killed. So they're all three. But she said, "I didn't know really what you were going through, you know, until my own child got." You know, is no longer here, and I said, "There's, there's no." So we were, we had a really long talk about that, you know, because people always say, you know, the cliches. Oh, I know what you're going through. No, no you don't. Yeah, no, no, you don't. Um, and that's something you kind of want to stay away from when you, if you are trying to give someone um, a lending hand or or be a shoulder to lean on to say, "I know what you're going through," because it kind of diminishes. That's false support. Yeah, and it, you it, know, because you don't, for one, know unless you have experienced it. But even still. You may not know because every person is different, um, but it, it kind of just diminishes, like, oh, I know what you're going through. Like, it kind of like, oh, I've been through that. You can tough it up. Like, so, sometimes you can't just tough it up, and you need someone to listen and not say, oh, I, I know how you feel, but be there and, like, talk through the problem or just even be there to listen to if you need a vent or say anything. Yeah, that's – and I, I was just telling Matt the other day, and, you know, I kind of had one of my little meltdown moments, but it's like I'm forgetting things. I said, Matt, you know, I'm forgetting. I feel horrible because I'm forgetting things about Steve, you know. And yeah. and that's horrible that I said I don't want to forget, you know. But he says, but you also have the good memories. Yeah, but I'm forgetting, you know. And I was sitting there in my living going, I don't want. So I was, like, trying to go through pictures and trying to go through different things, trying to remember things. And that's the one thing I can tell you going through when somebody passes, you know, you're gonna forget. No. Nope. Well, yeah, because we can't use our brains as effectively as we'd like. I mean, it'd be great if we could use them like a computer, and store memories in different files, and look at them whenever you want. But I mean, because the body does deteriorate. You know? Well, I was just, I was just saying um, before you got here that my sister, um, she was kind of like my little tag along little sister, you know, went everywhere I did, and she was bringing up things. You remember when we did this last night, you know, and. and if you ask me now what we did, I could tell you, but when people start talking, you got this little trigger point. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. I forget a lot of things. Some people will call me extremely forgetful even. Uh, I can say you're but, forgetful. But no. I remember. Emma, is he forgetful? Like, I can okay. remember a specific conversation had, like, once it's triggered. Or, um, like, if I know I remember how something happened, like, I can remember every single detail. But, 
that like I think I have better long term memory than short term. So like this conversation that we're having now, I perhaps would probably be able to recall it like in three years from now, but in two weeks I might struggle. So I don't know. Memories are strange though. You know, I never quite figure out how they work. You know, like I have like my ball player to come up. Oh, do you remember when this do you remember when this? Uh yeah, sure I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Listen let's, let's talk more about it and then well, that you know happens to me a lot with um like I see a lot of people uh, who I knew in my past or when I worked at King, like I'll see them and I saw so many kids and students on a regular basis that I don't remember them all and they've also grown up a little bit so they've changed and or I'll, I'll recognize someone but I won't remember their name. Names I... Names with. are terrible. Terrible. I could tell you what, probably what they wore, what their jersey number was but and I, but, and I hate to say it, sorry guys, but um, like, like yesterday we had a fire call at our house. You know, I think Somebody got burned something or, or something upstairs. I don't know what it was, but a fireman. It was one of my guys, <laughs> you know. And I'm driving up, and all of a sudden he gets out. And I go, "Hey, you know." So one of my ball players. I, matter of fact, I have three of them that are firemen. But it was cool, you know, just to see him get out of a fire truck, and you know. And I'm like, "Why am I trying to talk to him? He's supposed to be running upstairs, you know." But it was just great seeing, and it gave me a sense of pride that he's a fireman, you know. I, I bet you they're on full alert right now. With, uh, all the fires. What is up with all these fires? I don't know. I, well, it's probably, you know, Christmas trees and stuff. Like, a Christmas tree burnt down our, at my house when I was uh, in high school. Um, a cat and a Christmas tree. That take, I, I'm kind of against real Christmas trees. I mean, I think they're cool. They smell nice. But, I mean, they're dangerous. I don't think Gizmo would get off on a... Uh, by the way, Gizmo talked today. Did he? Yeah, I was all, all excited. I called. We got he told me no. Emma. My little dog, Gizmo, the one that everybody's scared of, he told me no today. Yeah. We had, um, we, we're watching uh, a Bernese Mountain Dog right now. My dad just uh, had surgery on his knee, uh, ACL or MCL or something ACL. like that. ACL. Uh, and he's a big Bernese Mountain Dog. And he like, she like bumps into him and stuff, so he kind of needs to be clear for a couple of days while he heals. Um, and this dog is huge. But so now we have three dogs in our house. Oh, no. And uh, they're they're going crazy. <laughs> well, you got your little one. I mean, yeah. he's so cute. He is adorable, and he doesn't know what to do. He thought Bandit was big. He just stays away from from Jacks. Uh, and Bandit, uh, I think he's um, not happy. He he. They tried to play, but Jax doesn't. Seems like she's uh, wants to go home. Like waits by the door a lot. So oh yeah. Like anxiety. So maybe tomorrow should be a little bit better, but now your little one is he going? It's a the dog. Is it a he or she? He, he my puppy. Yeah, he, uh, is he going through the big dog syndrome yet? He thinks yeah. Oh my gosh, Gizmo thinks he's a Rottweiler. He's not. You and I've told you that. I tell everybody come over. I think he's got this big dog syndrome. He I thinks would, he's I like. I wouldn't necessarily say he thinks he's a big dog. He just thinks that he can do whatever he wants, and he has no boundaries. Like he will come up on your face he'll lick your face he'll try to eat your food out of your mouth <laughs> he doesn't bark though at all which is great um and it's kind of hard to like ignore him because he's, he's pretty adorable <laughs> yeah he's you know all fluff. yeah you know gizmo he just um i tell all the little kids back off you know because he might look cute but he's you know he's never bit anybody yeah. but he's just got he's he thinks he's a big dog and he'll go up to the biggest dogs in the complex and just like go he does think he's been bad, you know, because you and him are such friends. Yeah, well, he didn't like me too much. <laughs> That's just Gizmo. Well, he did not like me. He just he's very protective. To be, leave alone, I guess. Well, I was I was just saying the other day. I I told Matt. I said I couldn't leave him because people would think I was crazy. They had to go through the regime I have for my dogs. Yeah. People go through the whole. No, it's worse than you. You watch my dogs, but um, people go through. They're like, "What the heck? These dogs are spoiled rotten." So lots of dogs I know are spoiled. But um, you know what? It's the best thing to come home though, and see your dogs jumping up and down, and just like they're so glad to see you. That unconditional so love. Like Oscar is ecstatic to see me every day, and he goes crazy when Shay gets home. And uh, which, speaking of Shay, I think she might almost be here. Emma, can you go see? If she's out there. William, you want to see any Christmas Carol for us? Are you feeling charitable? Or not charitable, I, I, cheery? I can listen real well. Listen real well. Yeah. Well, we're going to bring little Emma on here, and I want to hear one of her Christmas stories, okay? Yeah, come on, Emma. Tell us a Christmas story. Come here, Emma. Tell us. Come on up, up here. Come on. I want you to tell us uh, your, what, what your... Santa's going to bring you this year. 
Yeah, yeah. Both of you just get, yeah, go up there. We're going to have a little. Hi, Shay. Shay's going to grace us with a song. But I want to hear about, I want to hear about Emma's. She's a little ill, so don't, don't judge. Oh, everybody's sick or down to age. Okay. No, just look at them. No, just, okay, what's, what's your favorite present you ever remember getting? Something that you wanted so bad, but you didn't think you were going to get. Do you remember what you got? Sometimes I forget what I got for Christmas last year. <laughs> I remember one time. The gifts don't matter. See, that's what yeah, I said. Yeah, see? see? It's more about family. Right? I remember one time I was 19. I, I guess I was 18. I was in high school. And I was a gearhead. I mean, I had the baddest, coolest looking car at Lincoln High. I'm going to say it. My friends will say it. All I wanted was headers. Headers are something you put on your car to make it really loud. So I go through and I open up all the presents. You know, I got a, you know, a fur, a sweater with a fur collar. Nah, I was just crying. I was bawling my eyes off. And I got diamond earrings, you know. Steve's dad just gave me everything. And I was like, I just sat there and I was pouting. I mean, I was literally in tears. They're like, what is wrong with you? I said, I wanted headers. I wanted headers. Here I am, a you know, girl, 18 years old, and I was freaking out. And I went in my room, like, slammed the door. And all of a sudden, they're like, come out here. And he walks in with my headers uh -huh. so, <laughs> for my car. And we literally had to go down and put them on the very next day. And I even had the biggest, biggest, baddest car then because it was loud. My, my dad liked to play tricks on us, too. Uh, he got me and my sister a couple of times. Uh, he got me with the, uh, the original Xbox. He had tricked me into thinking <laughs> that uh, he had talked to the guys up at Blockbuster um, up here on Ames when I was still there. And... Uh, talked to them and had me call and see if that they rented xboxes and the guy said yeah told me how much it was going to be and then uh he said come on and get it and my dad went and picked it up and brought it back and we're like woohoo an xbox because we had a bunch of family coming in and we're like we'll rent an xbox for all the kids to play and uh so we we play for the whole week and then he take acts like he takes it back and then on christmas day i open up an xbox and he had just tricked us into thinking we had rented it um, so I think that he could play a video game sooner. It, I exactly. Really was. I remember one year, Matt, all he wanted was a Creighton hoodie. He wanted a Creighton basketball sweatshirt. Did he, did he get it? He, we didn't let him think he got it, though. <laughs> See, this is, uh, yeah, I'm the prankster to the family, too. You know, you always, we would, and Steve, his favorite thing was, like, wrap up coal. I mean, he was always getting Matt. Just, you know, so I would start out with, like, little gifts. And put it in a bigger box, and then you go into a bigger box, yeah. and then you go into a bigger box, a and you're still wrapping. You know, yeah, but you start out with the, but there's little, but there's gifts in every box. It's not just like oh, it's well, boxes. Exciting, yeah, but he was really upset. He's like, I wanted my crate sweatshirt. Uh, where's my? It's not going to fit in this. You know, he was like bummed because he didn't think he was going to get one. Then he opens it up and he had, and then he was so excited. But back then, you know, Dane was his buddy and Anthony and stuff like that. It's almost like. Parents got to break the kids down. Just to get no, them. I had to do what was done to me. You yeah. know, I mean, it was done to well, me. And being a parent, we can get away with it because we are the parent. <laughs> have you seen those Jimmy Kimmel videos that they do where they, uh, they give their kids bad presents or let them open a present on Christmas Eve and then they videotape it and send it in? And yeah. Like, some of them are hilarious. Like, they got this one kid, a, uh, I think like a girl t-shirt, uh, and he like freaked out. <laughs> Well, started uh, la started screaming, yelling like he was like freaking out bad. Like if I would have done that, my dad would have given me no presents. Well, you know what? That's what I was just saying earlier. I said, you know, it's not a people are getting more t about the presents than the forgetting, like the family. Yeah. You know, and there's certain things that you eat. You know, for like me, I'm I'm really easy to to please for Christmas. Like I don't really care. I just like opening presents. Is that right? A bunch of random stuff in it. But he did give you a list, though, didn't he? Or give you hints on what he wanted? Come on, Shay, let's... let's. Um, he told me what he wanted, but he didn't get it. I didn't get what I wanted. I wanted a PlayStation 4. <laughs> but I know it. She, to her fairness, she tried to get me one. Um, oh, but somebody got a PS4, right? But they were all sold out and stuff, and so she... I think Cedric got, got one, didn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah. So I got other stuff. I don't know what yet, though. But see, you could always go to your mom's house. Yeah. Because so Cedric's got one. Yeah, I'm a little bit mad about that. Hey, hey, you oh, know. I'm not mad, just a little jealous. Well, that way, that way they'll, they'll, you'll have to come over more often. Your mom knew what I she was doing. They tricked me. See? They're clever. They're clever. Yeah. Okay, so what do you want for Christmas, Emma? Come on now. Oh, yeah. Um, an electric violin. 
Really? That's pretty cool. There's a specific color, wasn't there? A blue one. <laughs> a blue electric violin. So do you play violin in school? Yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty awesome. What school do you go to? Oh, you go to King Science Center? You need to talk a little bit louder, my dear. <laughs> okay, so that's a pretty cool present, though, because you can always use that. So is that what you want to do when you grow up is be a violin player? No, I don't. Oh, you just want one. See, here we go with the get at it, dude, again. Well, I, want, so I want, I want, I want. No. So, I mean, I mean, I'll encourage expanding your horizons. Okay, so you get that, right, and you come over, or I'll come over to your house because I want to hear you. Yes, yeah, serenade us, yeah. Yeah, no, that's what you got to do. But see, that's good, though, because you want people to hear you. You work so hard to, you know, practice what, you know, you're doing, right? So you want people to hear you. That's yeah. awesome. Now, we're thinking about putting on a gospel concert. See, I, we're thinking about going back and doing that. I used to do that before. So maybe you could um, practice a song and play at my gospel concert. Okay. See? No, because I do have kids that come and they sing, you know, and it's just everybody has a good time. And I think that'd be something, so I can let you know when it is, and then um, that'd be something maybe you could do. Okay. Have you ever played in front of people before? Uh, just like concerts. Well, still, though, that's good, though. Mm-hmm. But this would be good, and you can learn a little gospel song and everything. That, that's awesome. We'll have to plan on making sure we hook her up. Yeah. See? It could be the beginning of her I career. I have heard her play that much. I think I've seen one concert, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to go to more, but she's always, I always have to work. It's hard to... I remember your mom put pictures of you on Facebook. Of you at your, yes, yeah. She's always doing that, so I know what you, I know really what you're doing, Emma, see? Facebook stalking you. No, no, no. Your mom, that, put that up to your mom. She does that. That's what Facebook <laughs> is these days, though. You want people to know what you're doing. That's why you post it. In a way, you know. Now, we have this discussion all the time. <laughs> There's certain things about social media I don't like, you know. I love it all. because that's what you do, but no, there, but there's <laughs> definitely a negative connotation. There can be. It can be used improperly, but I mean, Bullying. lots of things. Can, like cake, if you eat too much of it and only cake, you're probably not going to be very healthy. But, you know, cake's still all right. Okay, did you Okay, did you see somebody put on YouTube, did you see about the little boy, the kid who got his wisdom teeth up? And then he talks after. Oh, my talks. gosh. That is a cute video. Have you seen that? Yeah. The best YouTube video ever. I laughed for like 30 minutes. That was so funny. Because the kid, now, Emma... We're going to have to remember this when you get your wisdom teeth out. Don't let anybody near you. When they start to put you under, mm-hmm. say, I want to be by myself. Because you say things you don't know what you're saying, then it'll come back to haunt you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, because your life is all. This kid, bad. you know how bad this kid's going to f- feel when he sees? I think he's going to laugh. Was it like real stuff that like, he had? Oh, he's talking about unicorns, and he was just talking like, Dad, remember, you know, no, he was really out there. I don't know what this kid was on or what they gave him. But when I had my wisdom teeth out, I don't remember being like that. So, Because this kid talked for 30 minutes, absolute nonsense. But it was so like fun. we got to show this to you. You're going to laugh. It's, it's hilarious. So one of these Facebook things, see? It might be me. Shane might be taking a video of me with my wisdom teeth out saying funny stuff. Make sure you, when they give them that little, that little cocktail. Once they're grown in, you don't take them out. Sometimes you do if they start growing in and pushing your teeth forward. That's what happened. Mine aren't grown in though. They just may not. But they're impacted. They'll just yeah. That's worse. Some people don't need to have them removed. (laughs) My roommate, he let his grow, and like, it looks really painful though. But now he has teeth in the back, way back there. Says that he can chew a lot better. I don't know. I had my (laughs) wisdom teeth out same time I had my tonsils out, and uh, I almost died from it. So yeah, because I I don't have my tonsils either. I got them out when I was. Well, I was um. I was 23 when I had these out. Well, yeah. Isn't it riskier later? Isn't that why? Yeah. But they figure since they're going to take my tonsils out, they might as well do it since they're all going to be under anyway. But then... Um, Complications. No, it was when I was home. Um, it's one of these things, you know, how your instincts kind of like take over subconsciously and you just don't know it. But I was sleeping and the stuff, you know, drains from your teeth and then the stuff sitting there tonsil. Well, I had a nightmare that... Steve's dad at the time was getting attacked by dogs, and, you know, there's, like, blood everywhere. I woke up, and it scared me so bad, I woke up, and it was me. Oh, gosh. So that saved my life. Oh. Yeah. Your dreams know. Yeah, you're subconscious. That's when I totally believe in what your subconscious tells you, Emma. You know, instincts, womanly instincts, those are true. Don't let anybody tell you they're not, because they are. Okay, I want to hear a song. Are you, you need a minute to get ready, or...? Are you right? What, what are you going to sing for us? Well, 
since it's a cappella, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. By the way, I'm missing the. You watch that show on TV where they're all singing a cappella groups? Yeah. I love that show. Oh, that show? I love it. Uh, one of my coworkers just showed me that. And that's it was a, awesome. That's a great show. So I was thinking I was just going to sing like one verse of All I Want for Christmas is You since it's kind of hard and I have a cough. Okay. We're just here about spreading the holiday cheer. You know, we're talking about blood and gore and yeah, all this. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll set it up with a, a nice little Christmas story that I saw uh, recently. There was. Um, this airline, I think it was JetBlue, I believe. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, but in the middle of the night, they had set up a, uh, a little kiosk that had a big TV screen on it and uh, uh, video kick chatted Santa. And all the people outside of that gate came and talked to Santa and he asked them what they wanted and they told him. And it was fun. The kids liked it and, you know, the parents were having a good time too. And uh, they get on their plane and then uh, apparently while they're in the air, the people where they're going to land went shopping for everything that was on that list and they wrapped them and everything and uh, got every got one family a, a big screen TV like got a, the kids everything they asked for one of them got a, a Kindle and uh, they uh, they get they land and they're waiting at the carousel to get your baggage claim and instead of their luggage out comes all these big wrap presents oh that'd be awesome and then and then they drop like snow so it looks like it was snowing and then santa comes out of the corner and he's like merry christmas and um like then some of the family started crying and i showed it to some people and it was a tearjerker i mean i don't usually cry at things but i mean it was pretty it was pretty moving but they, they did steve my son used to we used to sit there and watch you know you always have the hallmark commercials during the Hallmark movie, we would ball. During the during the commercials, yes. And my son was in his thirties, and we still cried. So that's one thing I remember about Steve. We'd sit there always watching. Matt's like, really? You know. <laughs> it's the, it's a, <laughs> hey, it's and it, it, the it did what it's supposed to. You know, it's yeah. supposed to get to you know the Hallmark thing because they're supposed to be sentimental cards or whatever. All right, she's wetting her whistle here. We're getting her ready now. I think, uh, which one would be best for her, do you think, sing on? That one, probably? Best, that's three of my right Would okay. this make, like, I would be able to hear it? Yep, yep. You put it up to the outside of Yeah, you got to wear them. But then I can't hear myself. You got to get closer to the yeah, mic. Yeah, touch the okay. mic, touch the mic, pull the mic. Can I stand? Yeah. No, Take the it's mic out. A, it's a lady. Oh, she's going to sing, I think, one verse of All I Want for Christmas is You, I think. That's fine. Check, check. Matt said she's really good. Is it on? Well, I can't hear. Is it, uh... Is, can you hear me speaking? Yeah, I can hear you speaking. Yeah. Can you hear me? Technical difficulties. No, no, don't. Check, check, one, two, three. <laughs> there you go. It's on now. She's saying for, uh, the... What are they called? The Storm Chasers for, uh, the National Anthem. A oh, really? Times. That's cool. Honey, I have a cold. Stop well, talking no, I'm just me saying. up like this. Well, it's also <laughs> winter. You know. Tell him I'm the worst singer ever. And then you'll sound good, right? She's now. awful. <laughs> I'm Matt totally says right. you're really good, so. I convinced her to come on tonight. I don't want a that for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. All that I want for Christmas is you. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. Baby, all that I want for Christmas is you. Awesome. I don't know. And she's saying another I'm person sick, for my gospel sound concert. Good. She sounded beautiful. You're hired. No, I thought anyway. Now I got the whole Compton family <laughs> involved in my gospel concert. So I, you don't want me though. I'm not. I a, yeah, we'll have I can you maybe MC. try to you get can MC, a low so. voice. Yeah. yeah, I can dance. I can dance. Oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> Even William got one going on that one. Well, I, maybe I don't dance that that well, that but awesome. I enjoy dancing. Very good job, Shay. No, that's okay. No, it's fine. No, it once great. you start going, you feel good. You know, you just keep going with it. A lot of Christmas songs are kind of, I would say, difficult to do a cappella because. Yeah, my friends and I should do Santa Baby, but I'm just like, I don't know that song that long. Santa Baby. <laughs> ah, da, 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 da. I just know the Santa Baby part. I only know that part. I remember my favorite song <laughs> in school because, uh, you know, I can't read notes, you know, for the life of me, but I can hear it and I can sing it. So, you know, I always faked it through high school. I was in, but I always made every madrigal, every choir, but I couldn't read a note for my life. I was in band, and I, I never learned to read music. Yeah, I'm not, but, you know, you hear it. It's, it's yeah, tricky. Yeah, me too. But you can fake it pretty good, because they always expect you to read music. Not. No, but my favorite Christmas song was always Silver Bells. You know, yeah, because I remember singing that all the way from elementary school all the way up to high school. I think Christmas music is great for December. Right, right. That Just was Steve's December. pet peeve. As soon as Halloween is over, man, Mom, the Christmas music. I turn on a song, turn it, and he, no, Steve hated Christmas music. But like I said, he wouldn't about the commercialism. Yeah. You know, you'd always hear Christmas song, they'd always try to sell you something, you know. Yeah, I, I like What's Christmas. What's your favorite song, though? Emma? What, yeah, what's you don't favorite? have to sing it, your favorite Christmas song. I like the chipmunks myself, so. That comes on our Spotify playlist. I love the chipmunks. I even have a chipmunk doll. I think I, I'm a big fan of Jingle Bell Rock. And I like I Elvis like Presley. Jingle Bell I don't know. Oh yeah, what is that one called? The the Drummer Boy. Um, the little Drummer Boy. Yeah, I like that one. Isn't that the ba da da dum dum da da dum? Yeah. The Sugar Plum Fairy. I'm not sure that is what it's called, but <laughs> <laughs> look it up. We got smartphones now, so yeah, I mean, we call that. Go I call Matt Google Boy. Give it a Google. Matt always asks me questions. I'm like, come on, Google Boy, just look <laughs> things up. So, all right, William, how about you? What do you want for Christmas? Uh, I like well, the music. I like Silent Night. Uh, song. That's one of Shay's favorites, Silent Night. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> half the names of the Christmas songs. I just know that they're a Christmas song. Well, I put. Uh, yeah. What do you want for Christmas? Yeah. yeah. I just want to get up and have my knee feel good just one day. I want warmer weather. That would be nice. That's yeah, just. Yeah. You know, but here's what I'm saying. You know, Denise was, we were talking about it's so cold. It could be icy, it could be snowy. Matt said they yeah. had rain like for days in North Carolina. So I'm thinking we're pretty lucky. Yeah, everybody else. So, <laughs> and just think, if I would have tried to go to North Carolina, I wouldn't have made it. Everybody, if I would have drove, yeah. I would have got stranded. If I would have tried to fly, I would have got stranded. Mm. So it's a good thing, you know. Even though I'm really gonna miss my first Christmas without my son, uh -huh. ever, and he's gonna be by himself, which breaks my heart. That's sad. Yeah. Well, you guys can you guys can Facetime with your new we're iPad Mini. To, we're, uh, we are going to Facetime. There exactly you go. What we're gonna do. But I'm very fortunate to have my sister here this year. Which That's is nice. a good thing. Is she staying with you? She lives here now. Oh, does she? Yeah, she lives over in La Vista. Nice. And then um, my brother, I'm going to go visit him. So we're gonna we got a, a pretty packed week once it starts. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to go have Christmas with Shay's family, uh, Christmas Eve, and then uh, we're going to do some things with my family Christmas Day, and then uh, we're going to go see a movie. Probably going to see The Hobbit. I like to go see a movie on Christmas. It's By the way, Matt says tradition. the Nebraska movie is great. Yeah, I imagine it would be. Wasn't that Alexander Payne? Yeah, he said he didn't expect it to be as good as he thought, you know, as it really, really was. Yeah. Because it just got to North Carolina, which he was bum. It was here for a little bit. I didn't it's, get a chance it's still to. A film, is it? Yeah, I think it's still a film stream. She says, Mom, you have to go see that movie. Dance of oh, the Sugar you, Plum Fairy. Oh, look brother wrong. There we go. I always used to do that too. Nice that too. could just be one person who named it that. Collaborate. Everything on the internet is true, right? So, Emma? Emma? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. play. Hey, Emma, how old are you? Uh, 13. 13. Her birthday's on Friday. Yeah, Friday. Oh, and you're, you're a twin, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, twins. Ooh. Two yeah. sets of twins in your family? No, just one. I thought you were... I'm not a twin. Oh, I thought you were a twin with your sister. No. A lot of people do think that, though. I swore you were <laughs> a twin with your sister. She's, uh, she's two years younger than me. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
People get confused. So it's just a, remember when you have kids, twins running the family. Yeah. Mm. I, I'd rather have twins and get it done with. I'd, I like that, that one That doesn't mean each. you're going to be done. No, it does mean we could be done. <laughs> I do that I want twins, but I don't think that when they're fraternal, they run in the family. Yeah. It's an, it's, yeah. Aren't they an accident anyway? Isn't it just a, a chance? Yeah, it's an accident. Like the it's cell like splits. <laughs> It's like, I mean, it's by chance. It's yeah. an accident that there's two of you. So are you fraternal you. twin or you're not, you're fraternal? Yeah, they yeah. don't look hardly at all. I know, because no. when I was told that, when you guys came out, I'm like, you guys don't look alike. No. No. They look real, like siblings, but, but they you don't. Look, but you and your sister. Yeah, we look a lot alike. And my brother was two years younger than me, and everybody thought we were twins, but he yeah. was two years younger than me. And then Jeremiah is my younger brother, but he's bigger than me, so <laughs> people usually think that uh, <clears throat> he's the oldest when we go out to eat, like as a family or whatever. Uh, and they think that Emma, they give Savannah a big grown-up menu, but then they give Emma a kid's menu. And she's like, I'm the same age. And it's it's hilarious. It bothers her. But they uh, they think that she's a little child because she's short. Well, you know what? Let me tell you a story about the kid's menu. Okay. Matt was home a couple years ago when Steve passed away, and we went to Arby's. And I, I get kid's meals because I don't eat a lot. Okay. So he went into Arby's. And he goes in there, and they're like, well, what kind of toy do they want, does your mom want, or does this person want? He goes, well, it's for my mom. He's like, well, let me give her the senior citizen discount. He came out, and he thought that was the best thing ever. Mom, I got your senior citizen discount. I said, yeah, but where's my toy? <laughs> no toy. <laughs> no, I used to get toys all the time, and I'd give them to Matt when he was little. I got a, we have a toy from one of our uh, first so times we were dating. I'm doing just the opposite of you. I'm doing the old lady thing and you're doing the other. At, uh, at Sonic, I got Shay a kid's meal. Like on one of our third dates or, I don't know, fourth date maybe. It was early in the dating process when I bought her, uh, well, I bought her kid's meal and she told me never lose this. This stuffed animals are love. <laughs> and I still have it. I didn't lose it. It's not like one of the one things I didn't lose. A little blue stuffed animal fish. It's like, not even, it's like this big. Well, I used to be a manager of Hardee's and I... All the deep sea talks. I, I, I think, you know, I still get the toys and I give them to little kids when I see them, you know? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. They think they're getting something really cool and really, I got... Toys are crazy now. Like, they got some, some toys I see when I'm at McDonald's. I was like, that is, that, I never got a toy like that when I was a kid. I got... Yeah, they're pretty Yeah, a little, or a, uh, like a little Lego-sized figurine. I remember when I was a manager of Hardy's back in the Raisin. Well, you remember little Raisin guys? Mm-hmm. I remember, and I, yeah, and I used to have to bring them home to Matt all the time, the little Raisin guys. And we had them, like, l- literally, like, 40 of them. Hmm. Do you know what ones were crazy? What? You got to talk into the mic. No one can hear you. Do you guys remember the Beanie Baby rave? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had the um, in the Happy Meals the little tiny yeah. Beanie Babies. That was super awesome. It was like a miniature Beanie Baby. I think baby. most people try to forget the Beanie Baby craze. Oh, that was didn't we all collect them? We brought out the worst I totally in people. Did. <laughs> oh yeah, we would store them in like um, deli containers in to deli keep them containers. in mint condition. Yeah. yeah. My mom, my brother, and me. And they didn't get valuable. They like are worth nothing now, aren't they? We sold them at a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we did not get a pretty penny. Yeah. Well, see, Steve always say, had the He-Man guys. I mean, he had the tons and tons of He-Man. Matt was Power Rangers. And so um, Steve, the, his dad still has his He-Man guys, and they are worth a lot of money. Well, yeah, those are, like, action figures are a little bit more um, valuable than the Beanie Babies. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember the Westeros Mall, Beanie they, had a Beanie, they had a Beanie Baby store at the mall. Yeah. Oh there was just too many, though. Things can't be valuable when you flood the market with them. We used to stand in line for, like, the Princess Die Bear and stuff. Really? We won one once. You won it. And they were expensive, too. Like, sometimes they're, like, $120 or, like, $40 for... Uh, that one was a special limited edition. <laughs> and she's really, she's you really she's about right. that beanie we're, baby, we're right? Bringing here. her back to her childhood. See this? What we're, see this? Was what this Christmas? Christmas is about. Was it around Christmas time? I don't remember, but it was purple and it had a little white flower on it, and it was a bear. See, we're bringing back childhood bear. memories. They were all what you're bears, supposed to they? do. No, they weren't. No. We had a good time as a family, waiting in line for beanie babies, and winning, winning them. Winning. Because that's what we do. 
See, I didn't know they gave away Beanie Babies. See, I went I, I went iPod Minis. That's what that's a good. Yeah. Oh man, I'm jealous. That's way better. Well, yeah, <laughs> iPod Mini way better than a Beanie Baby. <laughs> That'll too. hold value but, a lot but more. But it's just a point that you win. Yeah, hey, winning is fun. We won know some would be raffles. Really awesome, like that couple that won the lottery. Yeah. Their life is awesome. Here they said that wasn't going to change her life, and he just he just ordered a special edition Corvette. Oh, really? She got a brand new truck. Well, his car broke her down the day of the, that uh-huh. he had won his truck. And yep. what is the odds of 120th and L Street, right down the middle of traffic, you said. That's crazy. I mean, that's got to be his sign, kind of, though. See, like, things happen for a reason. It. They needed the money. Not was it a big lottery? Million dollars. Well, probably million. not that many, but still it helped him out because he probably couldn't get a car before. And now he's got a new car. Now he's going to buy his dream home with his wife. It sounds yep. so nice. I want $1,000 on a Wheel of Fortune call-in puzzle once when I yeah. did. My car broke down, and I won $1,000, and I went out and bought me a car. So things do happen like that. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. I keep getting things in the mail that say I'm a winner. At and these. then you don't go cash them. And then I don't go at these uh, dealerships and stuff. I don't trust the them. The keys. I know. Go no, it, yeah. not, well, it wasn't a key. It was like a scratch-off. And then uh, if they you match the you numbers, yeah, they want to get yeah. you in there. But See, this is what everybody says about the iPad. But They're did like, I win? They're like, it's not a scam. They're going to come back try to get some. It's not. People don't believe me. No, it's for real. You can win things by saying by doing like on Facebook. Yeah, it's about brand some, recognition. Right, and I've done it. I won something before like that. So it, but people think, oh, it's just a scam. Yeah. Well, some people. I mean, your, your mom and I. She, we like the same things on. Yeah. You know, she'll well, enter a contest and I'll enter a contest. They've trained you so much these days that half the time it is a scam that you're like, I'm so weary of it. Like my mom's like, don't listen to that. It's a scam. And it's like, I mean, you get phone calls that are like on your phone, and it's like, you want a cruise. I'm like, no, yeah. I didn't. Hang up. <laughs> but see, you will win. Like, I, I've heard about the cruise ones, and, like, you, you sit through, uh, like, I think an hour or maybe two hour long presentation where they try to get you to buy something or they, they show you a product. Um, but then for staying, you get it. Um, but how good is the cruise? If I don't know. They're giving it for through. free, though. I mean, they're going to be picky. <laughs> I'm well, just saying. I don't want to get sick. I've noticed a lot of things like are they do require you to do something. Um, you but have I mean, to make so much money. Yeah, like, they want you to get these like timeshare apartments or oh, yeah. homes. Or, or how much money do you make? Less than forty? Yeah, click. You know, that or some of them. That would yeah. probably be a really stressful sales pitch that you'd have to listen to, and I would break down. Yeah. I would. I'm not a salesman. I'd be like, I'm the sales me. target. They come after me because I say yeah, yes. And be like, oh yeah, right away. You wouldn't. Even, they wouldn't even have to try. They'd no. be like, oh, that sounds awesome. We'll if you if you tell me I need something, I'm going to believe you. So <laughs> just so you know, it's he's not the hard. He's a gullible one in the marriage, right? But yeah, when I try to sell him things, he's like, uh, if I didn't have the money. Well, it depends it. also because like there's some things so that I don't want to buy, and that's like uh, when she tries to role play with me for her. Um, her work for uh, insurance or whatever. And I don't know. Like h- nine times out of ten, I'm not going to take the insurance when I rent a car. And she hates people like me because uh, I do that. And so she wants to convince me otherwise. But normally it's because when I've rented a car, I haven't uh, figured in for that. So I didn't save that amount for whatever trip or whatever I need it for. Um, That's a racket. Yeah. That's a racket. Sorry, it is. But if you have full coverage insurance on your car, you don't have to get insurance. Okay, you don't have to, and we don't, like, force anybody or anything, but there is some advantages. I talked to some agents, and, like, the typical amount your rates go up after you file a claim is 20 to 25%. And there's some really bad drivers out there that cannot afford to have the rates go up, like you, Austin. <laughs> so I would highly <laughs> recommend that you take our protections, because I know you. Yeah. And I tell you what, if we song. rent, I'm taking the freaking full protection. Yeah. <laughs> We, and that's what's funny, too. Oh, she, 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 up, okay. she looks at me like she's like... married a year. Like, listen to this. Da, 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 da. No, well, that's no, why she that's helps like me. that's like that I did. And it's like, serious. Some people really are not very good drivers. There's Some a lot people of people are, not very good drivers. Like, I'm yeah, kind of like, an example. They were just in an accident now. And it's like, do you really want to file another claim over, like, a door ding that happens in the parking lot? Like... Some people really need it, and I'm not saying everybody does. Some people are great drivers, but a lot of the time it's not even like... And if you want insurance, call Shake Up. <laughs> well, because it also covers, like, hail damage and stuff, because yeah, while you have it, you're it's reliable. it's not people's fault. It's like, I mean, but stuff happens, like, in the parking lot, the world we live in, a lot of people don't have insurance, or you have a lot of hit and runs. A and lot of hit and runs. Unfortunately, it's like, then that comes back on you as the runner, and it's not very fun. 
Yeah. So, but it's, there is always the option that nothing happens, and then you did spend the money, and you feel like it was a waste because nothing happened. But when it does happen, you're like, "Oh, thank God, I had the protection on there." I'm so. See, like, when I get happy. that though, I I immediately think like, "Well, I just want to crash this thing now." <laughs> like when I, I got I got my phone, one of my first smartphones, uh, Best Buy, and they're at, at their, originally their insurance program was unbeatable, and they just recently changed it. They said because of people probably like me, but. Um, where like, I broke my phone a lot because I was just careless with it. But I had asked them, I said, so if I turn around right now and I throw this phone through that window and it breaks, you'll give me a new one. And they said, yes, but we don't recommend you do that, sir. But the insurance coverage will cover anything that happens to this phone while I have it. They will give me a new one or fix it. If okay, you so like your screen that broke... Oh, that yeah, wasn't my iPhone, though. That was a like uh, that was my HTC like four years ago. On purpose, obviously, we're still gonna make you pay. How will you? Then how will you, you know? You did it on purpose. How will you know? Well, if you tell me that. Well, I'm not gonna tell you. I, I did it on purpose. Just crash into the wall to see what would happen. <laughs> oh, sir, I'm sorry. Okay, I want to hear That's your song. She found it. I heard it. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, we gotta plug it in over here. Plug it in. Oh, is there a, a auxiliary? Here it is. What are we trying to play? She found her song. Oh. Sugar Plum Fairy song. This is a good song. Which, they, uh, they, uh, they do uh, uh, ballets with this song. Yeah. Yes, it's called the Nutcracker. Yep, yep. Small lake. Are you going to do a dance, too? <laughs> I'm Are you playing it? Yeah, it starts off quiet because it's like... She's so cute. I'm going to take her home with me. No! <laughs> right, so she's cute. a keeper. She's, a she's useful, too. <laughs> now it's playing. What is wrong with She's trying to get She wouldn't come over. Can you hear it? No. It's playing. It's 23 seconds in. What are we doing wrong, William? Is it playing? It's playing. In the speakers? Um, no. Me. Nada. This one? Oh, uh, I hear it. Oh, okay. This is Emma's favorite Christmas song. <laughs> Dick Carlos is not that. I can see the little belly. You're on. You know you're getting taped. <laughs> yeah, we're on. We're also video live. <laughs> yeah. See, he backed up. You're right in the camera, so it's okay. See, now when you get older, this is your. This song won't be so. Yeah, this is your favorite. You thought. I can't think of the other songs she's thinking about. Well, I don't think it's the Sugar Plum. Thing. This is the dubstep version. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was about to take a strange turn. <laughs> There's not a Justin Bieber remake. Of Care of the Bells, yeah. That, that sounds better than the dubstep version, really. So what does, That's what is, how you roll. This what is, is what does that mean? Dubstep means they did some crazy stuff to it and threw a, a really thick beat on it. You know, you're still on television. Okay. It's kind of like me, when you should play that song. If you think music could spaz out, that's what. Uh, like when a person like spazzes out, that's what happens with music. That's dubstep. I've never heard that before. Well, let's hear it. Is it all right, is this the dubstep version? All okay. right. This could be interesting. Oh, like they do that with the Christmas lights things yeah. too. Oh, okay. Have you ever been to Mannheim Steamroller? And then everyone has a seizure. Mannheim Steamroller. <laughs> Mannheim Steamroller, you would really enjoy it. Yeah, my mom. My mom and dad probably have Okay, well, we just want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you for tuning in, and we hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And next time we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions New and Year's how they are a joke, and nobody keeps them. And how you can keep yours this coming year. Anyway, I want to say thank you to all the guests that have been on so far this year. Um, especially my little... Tomorrow I get to work with my Olympic trainers. My Olympic guys tomorrow. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, they're going to be uh, 
having their first that meet was a, in January. That was a really good interview that you guys had. That was they're awesome guys. He even uh, went to Northwest to get yep. introduced at the basketball game. It was pretty awesome. So anyway, yeah, everybody have a Merry Christmas, um, Happy Hanukkah, and whatever your religion is. And if you're not religious, have a good one. Have yep. a good Happy Holiday. Enjoy the New Year, because everyone can celebrate the New Year. 1690 AM, the one.